Welcome to Portland Media Center's member highlight, one of the benefits for our nonprofit members. Today I'm at Mechanics Hall in the beautiful library with the new librarian, Jules Olson. Hi, Jules. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, we're glad you're here. And there have been a lot of changes in the library over the last year and a half or so. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Great. But first, um, the Mechanics Institution, the main charitable mechanics was the original name, I guess, mm -hmm. started in 1815. That's right, yeah. But there was no building. Right. They built the building in 1856, 1857. And originally, um, the library was on the first floor, and then it moved up here to the second floor, and we've been here ever since. And the library served a really important purpose for the tradespeople, the craftsmen of the area at that time, and today still, but a little bit more then. Can you explain a little bit about why it was so important? Yeah, absolutely. So one of um, the reasons for the founding of the Maine Charitable Mechanics Association was to give their junior members an opportunity for more education, both within their trades and sort of what we think of now as a liberal arts education. So that's always been an important piece of Mechanics Hall, and that's still a piece of it today, absolutely. Right, and SMCC, Southern Maine Community College, mm -hmm. is still an active member or a participant in some of the things we do here. Um, they're tradespeople, I think, mm -hmm. they, they, they have, who, who have received scholarships from here in drafting and in the past, and now it's on the computer. Um, is that still being done? Well, there was the the architectural drawing school. Is mm -hmm. that what you're thinking? Yeah, of? yeah, I think that, so. yeah. So that ran for decades mm -hmm. here, and then of course once things moved to the computers, that was sort of the end of the hand drawing. But yes, that took place here for decades. Mm -hmm. And now there are programs on computers here for students. So there's the Maine Kids Code program. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so that's oh. that's been paused obviously because of the pandemic, but we look forward to resuming. Yeah, that. and it's all about coding, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which don't ask me about that. Anyway, um, you have made some changes here. It is now Mechanics Hall. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sort of a more up-to-date name for the organization. Mm -hmm. There are only. 19 or 20 membership libraries left in the country. Mm -hmm. At one time, those were the only libraries, membership organizations. Um, tell us a little bit about if you become a member of Mechanics Hall and the library, what, what does that offer you in these other organizations around the country? Yeah, so that's a great question. So um, membership at the hall obviously supports the functions of the hall, our programs, me being here, the library, all the work that we do. Um, but yeah, there's perks for membership, obviously. So uh, members can borrow from our library. Right now with the pandemic, we're closed and only open to members. So members can come in here and work, um, hang out, borrow books. Um, and you can, as a member, you can rent spaces within the hall. Uh, there's a classroom and a boardroom, the library and our historic ballroom upstairs. Um, yeah, and there's some other perks as well, but one of the uh, really cool perks is that you can go to the other membership libraries across the country where you have reciprocal borrowing. That's really yeah. cool. And you've changed your um, card catalog Yes. Which is huge because yes. up until this very year, I guess, there's been a little old fashioned card catalog yes. in yes. a little oak mm -hmm. little oak drawers. Yes, I think we may have been one of the last libraries <laughs> in the country to still be using a card catalog system. And so the card catalog hasn't gone away. We get a lot of questions about that. It's in the back of the library right mm -hmm. over there by my desk. But we are working on importing all of our collection into an online database. So our patrons will have all of that online access that folks are used to now to be able to look and see if we have a book, if it's available, if it's checked out, um, to request it. So, and it helps us on this end be mm -hmm. able to track things and yeah, it's just great. Yeah, and, and during the pandemic and hopefully we won't have another lockdown, mm -hmm. but um, people were able to order a book and pick it up 
yes. at the door. Yes, we did curbside service and we're still offering that. So for folks who are um, immunocompromised or maybe just not comfortable yet, um, we continue to offer the curbside service and um, you know, folks can also come in and borrow too, mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. And being on, on the internet now, um, on the web and all, people can also come and sit in this beautiful space with mm -hmm. their laptop yeah. and work. Yep, yeah, absolutely. The members who mm -hmm. maybe want to get out of the house or mm -hmm. don't have an office to go to. But, yeah, yeah. Or many authors, I think, mm -hmm. probably come in and do some research and yeah. write. Yeah, there's a lot of folks right now who are still working from home, um, but looking to get out of the home a little bit. And so this is a nice controlled environment. There's not a lot of traffic going in and out. We have the windows open. We have the fans going. Um, we're requiring masks in compliance with whatever the most recent CDC recommendation is, which is of course a moving target. Um, so call if you have any questions about that. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a great place to sit and work yeah. um, and have like a little human interaction, but still be able to get yeah. some work done. And just yeah. feel kind of relaxed, like yes. you're in your own home, yes. basically. Yes, it's like an extended living room. Yeah. <laughs> and now you have just uh, started having library cards, physical yes. cards. Yes, yeah, so this is um, a new development for us uh, because we're able to um, have all of our books in the online catalog. People also have library cards, which allows them to request our items um, so that they can be waiting here for them for curbside pickup. You can order whatever items you want, and we can put that together. And all of that is enabled by the library cards. And um, we're also hoping, too, in the very near future, to offer um, access to e-audiobooks and e-books, and that will also be through the library card. So it'll open up a lot of things for us. And you're doing a summer book reading. Yes, thing. yes. That's kind of fun. Tell, tell yes. us, tell our audience yes. about that. Yes, so um, we're doing our first ever, I hope for many years to come, um, summer reading program for adults. Mm -hmm. And so um, the two ways to enter that right now are to sign up for a library card, which gets you your first ticket. And then you can get an additional ticket for each book that you finish uh, in July and August. There's a basket right over there where you put the tickets. Mm -hmm. And then we have a um, giant tote bag full of goodies. Um, things are still being added to that, uh, like all the time. But yeah, it's over there. It's amazing. There's so much good stuff. There's coffee, books, wine, snacks, yeah, gift certificates to lots of local cool. businesses. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have my library card and I've <laughs> added a few books in there. Excellent. And you don't, I mean, you don't actually have to have read a book that you've checked out from the library. Can it yes. be any book? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so the initial, um, the initial ticket is when you sign up for the library card. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it doesn't have to be our books, like bonus mm -hmm. gold stars, yeah. st stickers for yeah. that. But yeah, it doesn't have to be one of our books. To and another ticket. thing you're doing is a, is a book reading group. Yes, yeah, so we actually have a couple different book groups. Mm -hmm. We have um, a book group that meets at noon on the first Tuesday of the month. Um, that group selects the books for us to talk about. Um, in September, we're actually going to be choosing the next several months' worth of books, but this upcoming month, um, we'll be talking about James McBride's The Color of Water, and then in October, we'll be discussing Maggie O'Farrell's Hamnet. So lots of great book choices. And then we also, um, in partnership, with the Portland Public Library and um, the, oh, oh my gosh, the uh, Congress Square Congress Park. Square Park yeah. for, you know, for some reason, I always <laughs> want to call it Cumberland for a minute. I have to like, yeah, yeah. Congress Square Park, um, we meet every other week for Blurb Club. And mm -hmm. that's um, a more informal book discussion when we all talk about whatever books we're reading. Um, so you don't have to read a particular book, but it's a lot of fun and we have really similar tastes, so we end up uh, all reading books based on yeah. people's recommendations. So sometimes it turns into a little bit yeah. of a <laughs> book I, I like the bl blurb yeah. thing because yeah. you do, you know, if you have a book you've read, you want to sh mm -hmm. tell everybody about yes. it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's a great way to learn about yeah. books that yeah, it's been your great. friends have read. Yes, and, I have read books based on yeah. the, the recommendations in that group. Yeah. Well, I think um, the changes here are lovely. It's it's a comfortable place to come. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask you about ordering books. How often do you order books? Do you take recommendations? Do you get them from the New York Times, you know, 
list or how, do, how does that happen? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I place an order every month mm -hmm. um, and that order is a combination of books that I think our readers will read and books that people have requested that I purchase. So as a member-led library, our collection is shaped in many ways by the interests of our readers, both what I anticipate they might like reading and what they say, I'd love to have this book, and then it begins added to the collection. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how that happens. And then we also get a lot of um, donations from community members too, and those also go into the collection. And you have um, various collections here. You mm -hmm. have main, main interest books, mm -hmm. books about Maine. Yeah. You have main authors. Mm -hmm. You have the crafts. Mm -hmm. um, that's lovely too, to be able to come in and go right to an area you really want to focus on. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was just talking about this the other day with another librarian. We were talking about um, the Dewey Decimal System mm -hmm. and the Library of Congress classification and who is that serving? You know, who is who is benefiting from that system? And in some ways it's just the librarians because we know where to put stuff, we know where to find mm -hmm. stuff. But for the average user coming in, it might not necessarily make a lot of sense where things are. And so what we've done here, which is a direction um, that a lot of smaller libraries are moving toward, and, and some larger libraries too, is creating um, neighborhoods. So it's sort of like more of a bookstore experience where you can go to the section on fiber arts, or you can go to American history, or you know, novels by main authors, or whatever that is, and you can find them all together. I think that's lovely, and I and I use that. I come in and go, yeah. oh, what's new today? Yeah. Well, thank you, Jules. Thank you so this much, was wonderful, you. and I just checked out a book today <laughs> as I returned another one. I'm getting better about returning them on time. <laughs> well, we don't charge fine, so we just ask <laughs> that you return them eventually. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and uh, thank you for being a member of Portland Media Center. Thank you so much, Leslie. Yeah.